So Git repositories and version control with Git solves really um, frequent collaborative um, failures. Uh, I have seen all three of them. Um, one uh, is uh, the stereotypical person that, that says, yeah, I can't continue my work on the project because my colleague is currently working on this project as well and we would conflict with each other. Um, or a different uh, storyline. I have such a good rephrasing of this um, of this piece of the discussion that the reviewer wants us to change, but it's uh, currently with my PI, the Word document where I we're writing this manuscript, um, and he has had it for the past two weeks, and I really, really want to rephrase the discussion, but I can't. And then <laughs> this has also happened, and it was really terrible. So there was a grant writing, and everyone um, adds the changes and comments to this proposal of the grant. And then here's the scientific coordinator that you will send a uh, half a uh, dozen of drafts to and, and the coordinator will just scan all of these documents and find all of the convergences and merge everything. So that's all a little bit of a collaborative failure. What most of us do is we use tools such as the Etherpad or stuff like Google Docs when we collaborate on um, things like manuscripts or grants with several people and those collaborative tools they allow real-time edits at the um, by by multiple persons and uh, git uh, is the original collaborative tool um, that um, made this a possible um, first and um, in order to to approach this concept of collaboration I need to talk about something that doesn't immediately have to do something with collaboration. It is called branching and it's a purely Git concept, purely inside of uh, your Git repository. Um, uh, and I will just start. <laughs> so here's a um, Git revision history. It's a very typical Git revision history uh, uh, for something that's in your, that happens in data -led data sets. Um, it, uh, starts at the at the bottom and then the most recent things are at the top. So we start by creating a data set and then we add a pre-processing pipeline, we tweak the parameterization a bit, we apply a little bit of fixes to the uh, pre-processing pipeline, we compute the results and save them, we publish this thing and add a DOI so that it can be cited. Um, one way to view this revision history is as a timeline of changes. So you have this linear time progression and on this timeline, every commit, every save is, is one event in this timeline. Um, Git uh, develops these timelines on what is called branches. And the default branch in datasets is um, typically master or main. So this is a purely linear timeline here. Um, that only develops on a single branch, and that is called master. However, um, beyond a master or a main branch, data sets and Git repositories can have unlimited branches, and each of these branches can have their own timeline, and these timelines can be related, they can be completely unrelated, they can be partially created, um, and being able to work um, with branches can really make you uh, bend and travel time uh, quite powerfully. Um, if you run Git status in Git repositories, so just be um, prepared, the stuff that I'm talking about here with branches is purely Git. So you will see me using purely Git commands. Uh, it's something that that the data led has no way of, of simplifying. Um, so everything everything here is with branches is, uh, is is purely Git. So if you run Git status, Git status will actually show you which branch you're on. And if you run Git branch, then you will see all of the branches um, that exist. Every data set has a Git Annex branch. That's a branch that you should never visit. It's uh, as unreadable as the commit has hashes, basically, that, that, you, um, that you've seen. Um, but uh, I'm going to continue with uh, the purely Git um, concept of branches. Um, so let's, let me talk about a stereotypical branching workflow. 
when you create a new data set, it will automatically create the default branch to you. So data let create actually creates this new data set commit and that is performed on your default branch and there's a configuration in your git config that um, is responsible if that branch is called master or if it's called main. Every commit, every data let's save, then progresses the timeline on the branch that you're currently on. And if you never leave the master branch, if you don't touch branches at all, then this will all be on the master branch. So something that is quite fun to look back after a while is to see you know, the timelines that you've created in your first version control project. Um, here is a screenshot from the very first version control project that I used. It was also my first time programming, uh, writing a Python script and so forth. And also here, the most recent stuff is at the top. The older one is at the bottom. Uh, and what you can see here is that it's quite messy because in, that, in, in, in the past, when I was working on this, I was just purely desperate to make a thing work and I tried everything I could. So, so I changed the command, trying really hard to fix this relative import error. Okay, let's try import from the future. You can see with this red cross um, that everything failed. N none of the changes I did did anything to fix my problem. I tried a path hack for relative import. I checked if I can maybe fix it if I start from the root directory. Um, I did that wrong, so I, I repeated that. And then I found the typo that I made and fixed a path. So sometimes the things that you try out are not actually really sure to be the things that fix things in the end. And sometimes um, you just need a sandbox to try stuff um, that so that you can check if they, if they actually work before. You, you know, create this kind of um, more confusing timeline for others. Like this kind of timeline is completely fine. I often look at it just to smile about myself. But there are, there are use cases uh, where you maybe want to have a more pretty timeline. And branching is one way of, um, you know, sandboxing developments before you actually are sure that they work and you integrate them into a timeline that you want to share. Um, there are also useful for transparency, they're also useful for structure. They're definitely useful for collaborations uh, that will come tomorrow. Uh, and sometimes it's also fun to do a little bit of branching. So let's say this pre-processing script that I've added, um, that one, I'm actually not sure if I can get it to work. It came from a previous grad student and I just inherited it and uh, he used it, but I have no idea. And, just looking at it, it looks really bad. Uh, it has all of these absolute paths that I can't use. The parameterization looks completely wrong to me. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to make this script a little bit better and applicable to my use case. So I'm creating a new branch where I sandbox these developments and structure them. So the by running git branch and a name, I'm creating a new branch that is called preproc. Um, and then I can change paths by running the git checkout command to change from the main branch to the preprop branch. Any um, commit that I then make will be added to the preprop branch and the main branch will not know about this um, command at all. I can uh, continue my development on this branch in theory uh, I can tweak more parameterizations, um, I can um, finally make it work and then even compute the results. And then once I'm happy with the developments that I've made on that branch, um, I can decide that uh, I actually want to integrate those changes. If I, if I would want to not keep them, I could just remove the branch and all of the changes associated with it. I can also just let it lie around. I have analysis scripts in which I test different preprocessings in different branches, which is really neat because I can very flexibly um, change um, to different preprocessing, dif differently preprocessed data in my analysis. But let's say I'm happy with how this branch has turned out. I'm surprised that everything worked. So um, I want to integrate this into the main development uh, history that is the default branch. 
and what you need to do in order to to do this is it's a little bit uh, I, I envision it always a little bit as jumping around uh, switching timelines so i switch from the pre-prop timeline back into the main timeline which doesn't have any idea about the um, changes that have been done on the pre-proc branch but i can integrate those changes by running what is called merging so by being on top of the main branch and then merging pre-proc into the branch I'm currently in will um, include all of the commits, all of the saves, all of the changes that I've made into the main revision history. And if I share the, um, the, the, the data set, uh, they will show up on my main timeline. There are a couple of advantages. It's transparent, it's really clean. Uh, if sandboxing fails, then my default branch is still like quite nice. Um, yeah, and keep I keep different preprocessors in parallel and stuff like that. Um, what branches also allow is parallel development. So let's rewind a bit before the merge and let's say uh, I realize that there's a problem that's independent of the parameterization of the script. So I don't want to add it to a branch where I've mostly been tweaking the parameterization, but uh, I've I've encountered this problem that there's a path um, that there, that everything is absolute paths instead of relative paths, so it will not run in my home directory. Uh, and um, in order to, for example, keep a really clean timeline, uh, I can create uh, a new branch that's based on this last state of the main uh, default branch by um, again using git um, branch and git checkout or shorter it um, checkout dash b and on this branch let's call it fix paths i'm adding the um, fix for my path path issue uh, and it's on top of that path because it's such an important thing i merge it directly into the main line after i've done it um, using the same jumping around merging uh, so jumping to the main branch merging my fixed path but now I really want to have this crucial fix also on top of this pre-proc branch before I actually compute my results. And branches allow me to do this, yeah, time bending a bit, um, because I can merge any kind of branch and even individual events from different timelines to other timelines. So if I were to just have tweaked this parameter here, and then I have a main timeline that contains a fix for paths, I can decide to merge the main branch into my preprocessing branch to get my preprocessing branch in line with the developments that have happened um, while I was working on that different branch. And that is one way of getting this crucial fix into the development history that I'm currently building up. And then I can merge everything. I can, you know, publish my study. I can uh, add more commits, and they might even just go to the main line because they are, you know, nothing that I need to sandbox. It's just okay. I'm going to add the DOI to my readme file or something like that. That is a little bit. Too complex to to be super keen on doing. Um, so you can see here's here's uh, the difference that this has made for my Git revision history. The only advantage is basically apart from the like transparency is that it looks a little bit more exciting, right? But in in principle, this whole branching it was um, it was a little bit complex. The um, true strength of branching comes when we take it uh, into collaborative workflows. I'm going to go th through this quite quickly and I'm going to throw around a little bit of keywords that will only make sense um, and be, will, will be explained in more depth tomorrow. Um, but I hope to just um, to just register a little bit of the concepts. Um, so let's say it's not only me that works on this preprocessing script. I also got the grad student on board that shared the preprocessing script with me. So in order to collaborate, I have my local data set, but I also create, uh, you know, 
uh, entry point for collaboration by publishing it to GitHub. So what I'm doing is I'm creating what is called a sibling, a remote location of this data set uh, on GitHub. We'll do this tomorrow. Uh, I can use data that create sibling to do this um, and then push everything that I have done um, to GitHub and invite my collaborator, for example, Michael, to come work with me on that. Uh, I quickly um, jump over this and go through this tomorrow. Um, what I then have is a sibling repository on GitHub. And uh, what um, Micha can do is take this repository and clone it from GitHub to also have a development copy in which he can make changes in parallel. It's like we've been sending around this manuscript draft um, and we can work on this manuscript draft uh, simultaneously. Um, we now have three locations. <laughs> One is my own sibling that's local on my computer. One is the entry point in GitHub. One is the uh, clone of the data set that Michal has made in order to collaborate with me. Uh, my task is to make the pre-processing script parameterization really neat. I really want to change the parameterization. So I do all of the pre-proc stuff um, in uh, my um, pre-proc branch. What Michael notices right when I was working on that is that with the absolute paths, my, the script would never work for me. So he creates in parallel to the work that I'm doing a different branch, the fixed path branch that contains a fix to um, this problem. Because that branch is so, so important, this, this, um, this change, um, he creates what is called a um, pull request. Uh, and that results in him integrating his fix into this um, central repository for collaboration onto the main branch. So he has merged his branch into the main uh, revision history. And then I can come along and because it's GitHub, so it's quite neat, he can propose this change. I can say, hey, the, oh, thanks for noticing. This is really cool, great addition. I'm going to merge this. And what I can then do is I can take this change that has been happening um, in parallel while I was working and integrate it into my own um, work on the pre-processing script. And once I have done that, I can uh, integrate the changes I have done on this branch into the central repository for collaboration um, into the main revision. And that uh, is, was a little bit fast now, but it is the main idea between having several people collaborate on repositories on data sets. They can work in parallel. They can independently propose the changes or um, publish the changes that they want to do and um, integrate them uh, in the central repository so that anyone can update um, or push their updates. 